The Adventures of Prince Edmund, Chapter 7, The Battle with the Ogres. The next day was a very unpleasant day. The sun was hiding behind clouds, and the sky was ready to fall. It looked as if it was the end of the world, even though it was just a storm. It was not a day to fight, but they kept on marching. Soon in the afternoon it became sunny and nice on the trip. Let us stop and have a picnic, cried the general of the army. Boy, that doesn't sound like a general. Everyone got out and began to collect berries and fruits from the farmer's trees and began to eat. After everyone had gotten their fill, the general came to count how much food they had eaten. He then went to the cottage where lived the farmer of the land. Our army has eaten some of your fruit and berries. How much will it cost to replace them? It will be on us, general. Do not worry yourself, said the farmer. Oh, no. The army does not take handouts. You must tell us a charge for the fruits, or I will just give you a sum of money, either the cost or more. After arguing a little longer, the dwarf gave up and was paid one thousand gold coins. The general then turned and walked back to the army. All right, gentlemen, time to get marching again, to get to the ogre's camp before the day turns to darkness. With those words, the soldiers began to march. Edmund and Dastius went on walking behind the soldiers, hoping that they were not too late to save Xavria. Soon they came to the border of the dwarf land in Xavria. Beside the, dif besides the difficult place to cross the border, there was a moat and other obstacles. The witch was making certain that no one would go the way, this way, to Xavria. With the amulet in his hand, Edmund walked to the blockades and said in a clear voice, Amulet from the wizard of Zandabar, please make a clear path through the blockades so that this army and I may pass through to save Xavria. There was a loud explosion, and there was a path going right through the blockades. The army walked through, and Edmund and Dastius followed behind. To let no one that had passed through follow, he asked the amulet to make a blockade that would look solid, but, n but anyone could walk through. The wreckage disappeared, and in its place the blockade was back. To make sure, Edmund walked right through it. He then turned around and ran back to catch up with the rest of the group. The army had gotten a good lead on him, but he soon caught up since they were at a steady st step. Hut! One, two, three, hut! One, two, three. And he was running much faster than that. He then told Dastius of what he had done. Soon the sky started darkening like before, and they could tell that the... They were getting closer to the castle, for the vegetation was turning from green to yellow to brown. The wind began to holler and scream by them, but they kept their footing and marched on. Before long, they could see the castle up ahead. They could also see the ogres guarding it. The army then stopped at the general's command. Halt! We shall stop here until the sun has gone down. Then we shall launch a surprise attack on the ogres. But it was too late. One of the ogres had seen them and sent a warning which startled the dwarves, but they knew what was happening. They jumped to their feet, ready to fight. Edmund and Dastius were given swords to themselves against the attack. The general then yelled, Charge! And the dwarves went on to fight. It was a long, hard battle. One real good look at the ogres would make the bravest man turn around. But Edmund had promised, and he decided he was not going to quit now. With that, he started to fight like he had never done before. Soon the ogres ran back into the forest. Dwarves, attack Plan C, now! screamed the general over the noise. All the dwarves went into a circle. Edmund, in the middle, just in time for the ogres from, the ogres came from all sides back on to them to attack. To their surprise, the dwarves were ready for them, and one by one the ogres dropped dead. The thick skin and armor helped the dwarves to beat off the ogres, but some did give in. 
Just then, out of the corner of his eye, he saw one of the dwarves fall, which he thought he knew very well. He ran up to him to find out that it was Dastius. He tried everything he could to bring him back to life, but nothing seemed to work. His first tears of the whole conquest began to roll down his cheek. He dropped the body and put on his helmet. He asked from the amulet for the strength to kill the ogres. He then realized that the amulet was gone. Feeling that, he had the, feeling that he had the strength, even though he did not have the amulet, he went and took Dastis' place. He began to fight like he had never done in his life. Many ogres came at him, but he threw them off himself as if they were small ants that he did not like crawling around. Suddenly, there was a crack of lightning, and the ogres, dwarves, and Dastius disappeared. Standing in front of him was the witch. So the princess was right. She really did find someone that she thought could defeat me. Well, we'll see if that is true. <laughs> there was a lightning bolt in the sky, and they were ready to fight. With all the courage he could muster up in himself, he got enough courage to fight. He then found himself with a dagger in his hand. There was a description on it saying, Whosoever kills the witch with this dagger will become a prince of Xavia and honored throughout the country. Edwin was determined to kill the witch now. He jumped at her and knocked her down, then struggled for a long time on the ground. The witch then disappeared and reappeared standing with a knife in her own hand. He plun she plunged down on him, but just as Edmund rolled over, the witch missed him and got the knife stuck in the ground. Edmund then saw his chance. He rolled over and struck the dagger into the back of the witch. There was a loud scream and silence. The, the ground began to transform back to a beautiful countryside it had been before. The forest disappeared, and in its place was a beautiful field of wild flowers. The sky turned from black to a gorgeous blue, and the sun came out once more. The dwarves and the ogres reappeared. Not knowing what they were doing, the ogres turned around and ran. Edmund picked himself up and found the general. He then began to tell the story of what had happened. Yes, but were all the people, where are all the people of Xavria? asked the general. Just then there was a cry from one of the soldiers. Look in the distance! Somebody is coming! Sure enough, there were many people coming toward them, and it wasn't the ogres. Edmund then realized that it was the people of Xavier, and the princess was leading them. He then started to run toward her. When she realized it was Edmund, she also began to run towards him. As they reached each other, they stopped and hugged each other. I knew you could do it, whispered the princess Andrea in Edmund's ear. The rest of the dwarves and Xavians had caught up, and they headed back to the castle. We still must get the king out of the dungeon, cried one of the Xavians. They all hurried to the dungeon of the, where the castle was. There they found the king fast asleep. They set him free from his chains, and as his chains fell, he woke up. On the way to the throne room, they told him of all what had happened. He decided he would throw a banquet for Prince Edmund the next day for all of his bravery and courageousness to fight the witch. With that, he sent out bulletins to everyone in the kingdom to come. Right then, someone walked into the throne room. It was Dastius! But how? Everyone thought he had died. He then explained what had happened and how he had just fainted. You see, when a dwarf faints, his heartbeat stops and his body does not work until it is certain that danger is over. Everyone laughed for the first time in a long time and welcomed him in. The end of chapter 7. Very close to the end of the story. I hope you stay tuned for chapter 8, Redemption of Xavier. Coming soon. Thanks. Bye.